Alrighty, I have to make a piece of commercial furniture and I have to do it way cheaper than the going rate of about $1,500 to $4,000. And I'm going to use pine pallets. I have two pine pallets that I'm going to start with to try and make as much usable stock as possible. So I don't have to go pallet hunting. There are two thicknesses of slats on these pallets as well as the chunky stretches. The loose plan at this stage is chunky stuff up the top, slats for what I need to do down below. Now this commercial piece of furniture is a reception desk and it is going into my wife's business. So it can't be at all dodgy or she'll have to buy one and I don't want that. I've got the thick slats, I've got the thin slats. This is the size stock I want to use. Now, two thins is greater than one thick. Three thins is about the size of two thick. But then the kerf of the saw blade, that would be too small again. Four thins, there's probably too much waste. So I think the safest bet, laminate all the thin slats together and then just resaw them into the thick slat. Whew, that wasn't even confusing. Can't slide left. I don't know what it is. I can't squiggle right to left, ideally. I don't think it really matters, to be honest. In hindsight, I should have just gone and got another pine pallet. I only made six more boards. I glued them all together, chopped them up. It was actually pretty stupid. I was trying to use what I had here right now. Forget that, I'm just gonna probably gotta go get more pallets anyway, so moving on. This reception desk is a curved reception. So I'm going to use the CNC to help make all the tricky parts. One thing I don't have though is any skills using SketchUp or Fusion 360. All I know is how to join a few shapes together to make my parts. I need to make a quarter of one circle desk and then half that quarter. So those pieces can be cut out on the available real estate on the CNC bed. Clear as mud, stick with me. I'm also going to use non-structural form ply for the structure, just so the non-structural form ply can feel good about itself on the inside. And again, while the CNC is cutting away, I'll be doing more exciting things like busting down two more pallets, denailing, metal detecting, straightening and planing, ripping and resawing, for example. I'm using the first batch of pallets and a few of the CNC'd offcuts to figure out how much stock I'm actually going to need. I'm hoping the two additional pallets will be enough. So, my dust extractor has just shit itself. Um, I've only got the next three days to do as much work as possible and it's probably the dustiest, messiest three days that I've done in a long time. I'm gonna accept that, make a massive mess, figure that out, plumb that up to the new table saw and hopefully the new table saw will finish this project. A lot of hopefullys. A lot. I don't actually know what the feature front of this thing is called, but I know I need a lot of these pine pallets ripped into these square, let's call them dowel-like pieces. CNC is getting a flogging, and I still have no regrets selling the mitre saw. All right, I would like to take a moment to talk about the sponsor of this video, which is BetterHelp. For the last six years, I have been coming out here to the shed, and what I realized pretty quickly was how good this space is for, is for me. I like to say it's money in the brain bank. This is not my full-time job. I actually work in emergency services. So I'm well aware of the importance of talking to people when things get a little bit rough. Therapy is something that I have never done. The older I get, the more I realize it's probably something that I should actually do. And that is where BetterHelp comes in. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed 
therapist who is trained to listen and give you helpful, unbiased advice. Starting therapy can be hard. The right therapist might not be in your area, and some people find the face-to-face -face interaction of therapy hard or uncomfortable. With BetterHelp, you can have your therapy session by a phone call, video chat, or even messaging if you'd prefer that. Whatever is the most comfortable therapy for you. BetterHelp can match you to one of their 30,000 therapists in their network. Click the link in the description or go to betterhelp.com slash Dana. To get started, all you need to do is fill out a questionnaire and then you'll be matched to a therapist. In most cases, within 48 hours or less. You'll be able to schedule a therapy session that is convenient for you. And if a therapist you are matched with at first isn't quite right, then you can easily switch to a new therapist at no additional cost without stressing about insurance. Clicking that link helps support the channel and it also gets you 10% off your first month with BetterHelp. So you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. Okay, the top of this desk will be a pine pallet wood slab top. And I've used all the chunky pallet stretches. I've made sure all the nail holes face up or down. This makes sure all the movement is across the boards and not across the slab. I want them breathing up and down, not left and right, if that makes sense. No dust extraction is a bit of a nightmare, but I have to keep going. As well as wanting to save the dollars on buying a desk, I need to have the desk ready well before it is needed, because if we do have to order one, that has to happen very soon, and I don't want that. Let me share a pallet punter tip with you. If you do your slab glue up in one go, knowing that you need smaller widths to go through the planer, what you can do is clamp up the entire slab in one go, and then you'll have a perfectly jointed edge ready to go for the two pieces, yin and yang, if you will. It just saves one more step jointing, especially when time is not on your side and you want to emphasize that again to dramatize the video. CNC parts are mostly done now, and I have to get on with putting a round over on two edges of all the square dowels. That will now be half rounded dowels. The router table is normally one of my best machines for extraction, but with no extraction, it is a massive mess, and it is also a very slow process to get all of these lengths done. Gotta press on. I slightly miscalculated the dimensions of the slab top. So I had to glue on an extra few pieces and then hand plane those flat. Yes, I own a hand plane. Before I could put it onto the CNC bed for magical shaping. I tell you, I have been pretty blown away with the CNC. Even with my limited design skills, I was able to make a heap of parts with amazing precision. I can only imagine all the fluffing around I would have had to have done if I had to cut these arcs with a router and a circle cutting jig. It is time to start assembling all the CNC form ply parts and you'll start to see what the reception desk is actually going to resemble. I did have to do a little handsaw work which can be expected when you completely make up a project as you go without any plans. I'm working my way up from the base, starting with the kickboard, and although it does look a little overcomplicated, it actually is not. Just a few extra steps to get it to look right. With the kickboard sorted, it was really just a simple process of making a skeleton frame to join all the components together. The strength is going to come later in the project. It was pretty cool to have the CNC cut out all the joinery sections as well. However, because of the router bit, all the corners have a round profile at any 90 degree turn. So to save time chiseling all of those out nice and flush and square, I decided to chamferize all the uprights so the rounded corner was not a player and everything sat nice and flush on both sides. All I have to do is check square a few times to continue to work my way up the reception desk. And then handsaw off any parts I didn't need. 
and lop off all the overhanging uprights. With most of the brain work done, I can bust out the tight bond and do what I do best. Join pieces of wood to other pieces of wood. Okay, this sheet of three mil ply was just right to bend around the curve of the reception desk, glue, screws, and a trim router, and happy days, I'm cruising along to meet this deadline. I also did a double layer of three millimeter ply on the kickwood, just in case, you know, it gets kicked. Time for the part that I've probably lost the most sleep over, thinking about the process. This entire front face is going to be covered in the pine pallet half square, half round dowels. Initially, I'll just do a few pieces at a time until I establish a good routine and ensure that it all gets clamped down sufficiently. I ended up doing about 10 pieces at a time and I would come back as the glue had set on each round until I made my way right over the pallet wood Sydney Harbour Bridge. Absolute, 100% ass. <laughs> I celebrated just a little bit early, but there's probably two mil there. Happy with that. I'm sure there was probably another way to chop all of these strips off. However. I did not come up with one, and it did not actually take that long, despite the dramatization in this video. Feeling pretty chuffed with myself and my progress as I cut some biscuit slots to join the slab top together and bring this final assembly together. And that is when I learned a few things about circles that I had not really considered. In my brain, I could simply make circle components bigger and I would have a nice even overhang lip. Well, I was very wrong. If this table was a full circle, that would be fine. However, it is an arc of a circle. So different size circles make different size arcs. So the biscuits were not required and I had to make up some wedges to complete the slab top properly, which in the end, it actually worked out just fine. So just skinning up both sides now. I've used a combination of clamps, screws, but where I can't get clamps, I've just screwed these off cuts in to pull that sheet in against the form ply behind there. Then all that will come off, bulked up, happy days. Final component is a handbag slash man bag shelf. Somewhere where you can rest your stuff while you dig out your credit card, for example. The shelf is recessed into the front of the desk and I had a couple of chunks of pine which I salvaged from my old table saw station which I've now pulled apart. I use the offcut curve from the slab top as my guide for my router.
I did get a little carried away on the second cut of this shot. However, I caught my mistake after only one pass, luckily. And then I had to rig up the actual countertop so I could get the opposing arc for the other side of the shelf. So without much fuss, I had that shelf. I then had to rig up an edge for the router and the flush trim bit to run up against to cut out the recess for the shelf. Although it looks a little off-road, it wasn't. Slow and steady was the secret and it actually worked out perfectly. Happy days. Getting very close to finishing, so putting a little chamfer on the top of the countertop to feel good on the inside. And also getting the CNC to cut the final parts, which is a desktop. So this reception desk is a reception and a desk. And I'm pretty stoked with how this has all come together in a pretty short amount of time. Here is a quick look at the desk prior to any finish going on. You'll notice there is some pretty ordinary looking pine with this heaps of what looks like to be oil stains, which it's not. In fact, what it is called, which I had to ask Dale, so let me look up what he said because I've forgotten. It is called blue stain, now we all know, which normally looks quite horrendous in my opinion. However, there is a reason I've chose all of this shonky pine. It is because this desk is going to be completely painted. No point spending big monies on quality hardwood or searching for nice pallets when you are not going to see them. And the pine has kept the overall weight down on this desk. So just a couple of coats of white paint for now. The final color choice is still being decided on. Stay tuned, I'll keep you updated on that one. And one more thing about the paint, because I slapped that on nice and thick, it has filled any voids between the slats and give it a nice uniform professional finish which i'm happy to say has been given the big nod of approval i'd have saved us a lot of money thank you very much for watching merry christmas happy holidays and catch you later